Alright, hi everybody, this is Joshua Kirk back with you once again on YouTube. Now it's time for episode 7 of Album of the Day. And, uh, as I promised you the last video, since the last video I didn't do that, I just did a comparison video on two different versions of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now I'm going back to do an Album of the Day. And, sorry for the pitter patter and the sort of breezy sounds in the background. Just, as you know, there is a, a hurricane come. There is a hurricane uh, right now. Uh, at least it didn't wipe out the electricity. But I was just reminding you that so that way you wouldn't get concerned about what, about uh, the uh, mishaps in this video. But anyway, aside from that, I'm going to be talking about an artist who's from Australia. I believe he's either from Melbourne or Victoria. Uh, this album that I'm about to talk about was recorded in Mornington Pen Peninsula, a studio in Victoria, Australia. Basically a little, like, barn turned studio. You know, um, his real name is Wally DeBacher. Uh, but he's the artist that we know today. Uh, mostly as Gautier. He's a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist. Hopefully this review will get a lot of views since this artist is... This is probably the first time I'm, like, reviewing an album by an artist who's, like, commercially popular. popular. So today I'm going to be reviewing Gautier's third album called Making Mirrors. Uh... This is the third album by Gautier. He's released three records, but of course, Making Mirrors is the first one to be released in the United States, and the first one that received commercial attention. Besides, I'm not sure a lot of you knew about Gautier until the single Somebody That I Used To Know, which of course is my is a great song, by the way, and it's easily my favorite on the album. Anyway, here's the cover of it. The Spine in the back. I really like the cover art on this. It's very quirky and diverse. It really matches the music itself since the album is pretty diverse because every song is something different. He's not repeating himself. He's basically making an album very creative and very um... And it made for a very um... interesting and diverse record. There's the back again. The songs on here are the title track, Making Mirrors, Easy Way Out, Somebody That I Used To Know, that's the huge song right now, featuring Kimbra, Eyes Wide Open, Smoking Mirrors, I Feel Better, In Your Light, State of the Art, Don't Worry We'll Be Watching You, Giving Me a Chance, Save Me, and Bronte. So the inside of the album, here's the inside of the album. Really nice artwork done by Frank DeBacker. F Frank DeBacker. Basically, uh, who I think is probably like Gautier's dad or something like that. Because I've seen the Making Mirrors documentary and it's very, very cool. Basically, where he talks about the studio that he recorded the album at and talks about how a couple of songs on here went together. Particularly, Save Me and, uh, Save me, like how the bass line is added and how the drums and the keyboards are added and state of the art, like how uh, the samples and the keyboards and everything were recorded. Recorded and uh, and the and he also talks about where the inspiration for the artwork for this album came from. It came from this painting that his dad did. He liked to paint his in his spare time. Anyway, here's the disc itself. Got that same fabulous artwork on it. And then, here's the booklet here. And it's got lyrics and credits for all these songs. Yeah, 
Yeah, just showing you the booklet. That's why I'm being silent for a little bit. It's the lyrics for the last two songs. And then there's the end of the booklet with the rest of the credits. Okay, let's put it back in here. So, this album, unlike a lot of albums that I've tried to listen to lately, like when I'm talking about very, very recent albums, this album was a breeze to listen to. Besides, uh, usually uh, if I'm li if I'm gonna listen to a newer album, usually I gotta like force myself to like listen to it like two or listen to it like one, two, or three more times. But this album, I fell in love with it just the second I just the second I turned it on. And it opened every track is so different and so cool that um I'm gonna talk about each and every one track by track. Now I don't usually do that. Usually I just go right to whatever track it is, no matter what it is. Um but this time I'm gonna do it track by track, which is a little different. The album opens with the title track, Make Him Mirrors. Now that's an instrumental track. It's not much as a song as it is an introduction to the album. Basically, it's like an under one minute um, intro to the album. It's very quiet and soothing, and it and it plays itself into the song Easy Way Out, which is a is a pretty decent song. Um, but when I say decent, I don't mean like decent. It's, it's actually pretty good. Easy Way Out's got more of a loud garage rock type feel to it because it's got a very distorted electric guitar in it, like a catchy guitar line in it. It's very simple. It's under two minutes. Even though it's under two minutes, it's still a pretty good song. But next is when the album gets great. Uh, is when the song Somebody That I Used To Know comes up. Now that's easily my favorite on the album uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it's uh, a very... It's got some really cool instrumentation in it. And number two, uh, two Godier and Kimbra's voices actually really fit together in this song. Song, because usually guest vocalists these days are kind of unnecessary. Necessary. But when Kimbra sang on this song on the second uh, verse and sort of collided with Gautier on uh, the second chorus, it really works. Of course, it really works, uh, in my opinion. 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 Uh, when I first listened to the song, I thought, hmm, I was kind of like meh first time I listened to it. But the second time I listened to it, I started to fall in love with it. The more I kept listening to it. And that was really what caught my attention and really inspired me to just get a copy of it. Uh, inspired me to get a copy of it. So, so it's a great song. It's definitely my favorite on the album. Eyes Wide Open has is the first Australia single, not the first U.S. single, because... Not as big as somebody that I used to know, which is getting very commercial success. Um, this song is very, you can feel the heartbreak in the lyrics on a lot of these songs. Like this one is a perfect example of that. But the background instrumentation is also very important to listen to. Like sometimes it gets very noticed, like sometimes it kind of gets unnoticed. Like there's like a slide guitar and then there's sort of a, there's all these interesting beats going on on the drums. You know, it's sort of like do 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 and like ksh, 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 kind of like that, like that. There's that. Uh, it's got some drum sounds that actually sound really cool. Um, I've never heard like a, a song this emotional with drums that are that all over the place, and that just really sounded cool to me. Smoke and Mirrors is one of the longest songs on the album, because it's like a five-minute song. Yeah, this is like one of the two five-minute songs on the album, like one of the longest songs in here. 
And this song really caught my attention when I when I heard it. It, it like uh, all these whatever heard it. Uh, it's got sort of this electric, got sort of this repetitive electric piano riff that um, sort of like uh, is what the song is led by. But then it's got all these African drum sounds that um, just make you think. Think uh, when you get to the three minute mark, you're all like, oh man, I don't want this to end. And luckily it's one of the longest songs on the album since there's a minute long outro at the end of it with noise. With with noise and noise and and then uh, in the and then in the middle of the song he's repeating the line Mother are you watching? And it's getting all distorted and it just sounds awesome. I feel better is um I feel better has kind of a more soul feel to it. It's kind of got more of like a 60s or 70s soul feel to it. Uh, it opens up with a really with a really um sudden horn section that just that just blasts right at you. But then uh, when Scotier starts singing, there's the drums and then there's the piano sort of going into this sort of R and B kind of influence. Influence that kind of sounds like Michael Jackson, but not as poppy and not as atmospheric as Michael Jackson is. Michael Jackson is uh is uh, and I know when it really gets soulful is when you get into the chorus. Chorus with a sort of a call and response thing going on since Gautier, since there's more vocal layering on this album than there was on Gautier's first two albums. First two albums, uh, because there's no backup singers on here except for Kimbra on somebody that I used to know. Um, because he's basically overdubbing and basically double tracking his vocal or doing some studio trick to his voice or uh, adding more backups. Gups, like that's sort of uh, what really sounded cool to me is when uh, he um, did more vocal layering, because I'm usually not a huge fan of that kind of studio trickery. Great. Uh, but it just sounds great. Uh, In Your Light has kind of a more catchy, a more, like, uh, beach music type feel to it. It kind of has, uh, like, this song kind of has influence. The song's kind of influenced by, like, uh, the Shins and, um, and, uh, the Beach Boys and, um, and Train, like, Modern Day Train. It sounds like a song that could have been on Save Me San Francisco, like, kind of reminded me of Train's latest singles, like, Hey Soul Sister or something like that. Uh, Stir, Derp, it's got a a very catchy drum beat with kind of a clap and stomping kind of rhythm on it. And, uh, on its end. It's got a one minute build up and, uh, it's got a, a one minute build up uh, in the beginning of the song, which works, which I think really works since the drums, the bass, the guitars, and the keyboards get in. And then, uh, and then there's a horn section coming in, which really fits the song perfectly. Uh, kind of like on I Feel Better. And Smoke and Mirrors is a few horns, too. I forgot to mention that. Mention that. Um, that, uh, and it's got the title of the song repeated over and over again. Uh, which sounds kind of crazy, but it actually, it surprisingly works. State of the Art has kind of a more reggae feel to it. And I could totally hear the police playing something like this, because Gautier's voice sounds a little different than it is on some of the tracks, in a way I've never imagined any good singer-songwriter to use, is that he's manipulated his voice to make it sound very robotic. Besides, uh, whenever he performs it at live concerts, you like 
connects the microphone to like a synthesizer. So it kind of sounds as if this robot is talking to you about, um, since the song was written about how to make electronics, uh, electronic music, uh, which is what it sounds like it could be. Yeah, not only is he a quirky musician, but he's a quirky lyricist, too. Because I... Lyricist, too. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about him. Usually I'm not... Usually I'm not... Uh, usually I'm not a fan of auto-tune, because... Uh, most of the time I'm not a fan of auto-tune. It just sounds a little bit synthetic for me. But in this song, it actually works uh, when when he's manipulated his voice in here. And I could totally hear the police playing something like this. Cause they've manipulated their voices in a few of their songs songs and added a reggae feel, you know, with like the wonk wonk guitar thing. Guitar thing. Uh thing and all that. That uh Don't Worry We'll Be Watching You is a quieter and creepier track, but it's, but the song actually sounds cool instrumentally. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the song at first when I started listening to this album, but I, but the last couple of times I listened to this album, I started to get more into this song, because the instrumentation sounds, uh, uh, really cool. There's cool, uh, cool, although it's very minimalistic. Giving Me a Chance is, once again, a quieter song, uh, quieter song, which is, uh, an okay song, in my opinion. Uh, not saying it's a bad song or anything like that, it's just okay. Okay. Uh, But Save Me is, But Save Me is a great track. I love the lyrics and the vocals and the way they're presented on this song. Uh, it's just... I just love the way everything is sort of layered and recorded on it, on this song. Song, and I know this is like, I'm not sure if this is a single or not, but I know Go but I know this is like Gautier's most recent music video for the album. And he also did a video for Giving Me a Chance to, Chance to, uh, on his YouTube channel, go check that out. Yeah, because he's got quirky video clips going on. Uh, if if you haven't checked them out, like go check them out on YouTube because they're pretty cool. And then the album closes on kind of a kind of a tropical island uh, flare type note on the last track, Bronte, uh, with the steel drum and strings, and it's and it's a great way to close the album. This is a slower song and. Sometimes it's nice to close an album with a slower and a more mellow track. It's very soothing to sing along to. To uh, this album, I think is great. Um, I wasn't mispleased with any of the tracks, even though um, even though I thought "Easy Way Out" and um, thought "Easy Way Out" and uh, "Giving Me a Chance" were kind of uh, okay and decent. Although they're actually pretty good. So my favorite song on the album, of course, is the huge song, Somebody They I Used to Know. Other favorites include... Hmm, let me think about it. Oh yes, other favorites on this album include... Uh, Smoke and Mirrors. I Feel Better. Eyes Wide Open. Then... Uh, State of the Art. In Your Light, Don't Worry, We'll Be Watching You, and Save Me are probably my favorite songs on here. Uh, the album is really good. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because highly recommend you check this out. If you're into, like, if you're into, like, music that's very diverse and very, um, intense, this is the album to go for. For it's literally that good. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for... Episode 7 of Album of the Day. Stay tuned for Episode 8, which I think I'm going to be reviewing a Woco album then. So, stay tuned for that, won't you?